Hello, everyone, and welcome to the special ESMO GI Clinical Forum. My name is uh, Dr. Alexi Alishin, and I'm the Senior Medical Director for Oncology here at Natera. It is my great pleasure to discuss with you today advances in circulating tumor DNA testing for the detection of MRD, as well as for molecular surveillance, utilizing a novel tumor-informed assay by the name of Signatera. Our agenda today is to discuss the Signatera testing methodology, discuss some of the clinical validation data behind Signatera in detection of MRD for patients with colorectal cancer, and then actually present some of the exciting data beyond colorectal cancer for the use of Signatera in other GI malignancies. It's been an exciting year for us here at Natera Oncology, with us recently being able to launch our CLIA CAP accredited test with over 225 global sites now adopting our assay for both clinical testing as well as for clinical research. We've recently announced and enrolled our first per patient on our bespoke CRC study, the first prospective registry study looking at the clinical utility of CTA testing in patients with early stage CRC. Furthermore, we've been pleased to announce a prospective partnership with the National Cancer Center of Japan for a uh, randomized study looking at ctDNA-based treatment uh, decisions for both treatment escalation and de-escalation in patients with resectable colorectal cancer. We've also signed over 50 agreements with various pharmaceutical partners covering over 15 different histologies, and for the first time have been able to announce prospective studies that are using ctDNA testing for both the enrollment and randomization purposes in these studies. We've also announced a positive Medicare draft coverage decision to expand access of the Signatera assay for patients with stage two, as well as three colorectal cancer here in the US. We also continue building on our extensive uh, uh, data set of evidence and have presented four abstracts at the recent ASCO meeting and have two abstracts that are being presented at this year's ESMO GI meeting. We've also conducted extensive analytical validation studies to allow prospective uh, randomized registrational intent studies uh, to, for the first time, proceed with our assay. And we've signed partnerships to expand access to the Signatera assay methodology with partners like Foundation Medicine, as well as SRL in Japan. When we think about the spectrum of CTDA testing that's possible in patients with uh, cancer, we really think about on the one side of the spectrum using CTDA to diagnose cancer at an asymptomatic stage. And this is so-called early cancer detection to really improve on methodologies like colonoscopy or mammography to diagnose cancer at a still treatable stage. On the other side of the spectrum, we think about using CTDA to identify actionable mutations that may be linked with targeted therapies, typically in patients with advanced or metastatic disease. In the middle of the spectrum, is really where Signatera has been designed to uh, have the greatest utility. And this is for the first time being able to identify MRD in patients with early stage cancer and being able to now track and quantify that MRD signal over time. Furthermore, the assay can be used for surveillance to identify molecular recurrence uh, frequently months, if not years, before clinical or radiological recurrence. The way that the assay is able to accomplish this with high sensitivity and specificity is that really it relies on this principle of being a tumor-informed assay. The way the assay works is we also always start from sequencing the two patients' um, uh, resective tumor as well as the uh, germline control. So we do tumor-normal full exome sequencing. And using this method, we're always able to identify the full complement of somatic tumor-derived mutations. We then prioritize these mutations from most clonal or truncal to least clonal or truncal and then select the 16 most clonal mutations, which are predicted to be present in all of these patients' tumor cells, for which we then design a customized or bespoke 16-plex uh, multiplex PCR slash NGS assay. Once the assay is designed, it becomes really um, effective uh, for serial MRD testing, as well as molecular monitoring in these patients. The reason that a bespoke or personalized approach is required for detecting MRD in patients with early stage disease is just the levels of ctDNA that are present in these patients. In our experience, more than 50% of patients with early stage disease 
have ctDNA levels detected in the post-surgical setting between 0.01 and 0.1% varying allele frequency. To put this in perspective, most patients with metastatic or advanced disease have ctDNA levels in the 1 to 5 to sometimes 10% varying allele frequency. So we're frequently able uh, and, and we need to detect ctDNA levels of 100 to 1,000 fold lower than would be present in patients with advanced or metastatic disease. To put this in perspective, two tubes of blood will have around 10,000 haploid genomic equivalents. So being able to detect uh, down to 0.01% variant low frequency really means that you need to be able to detect one haploid genomic equivalent in the background of 10,000. So really being able to detect one molecule in two tubes of blood. That's really the sensitivity that's needed for an effective MRD assay for patients with early stage uh, colorectal cancer. Furthermore, you need to be able to detect CTA in these levels while preserving close to 100% specificity. The worst thing you can do is actually provide a patient and a physician information that a patient is MRD positive when in fact they've already been definitively cured with their procedure. Uh, the most common sources of false positive uh, results in, in, in MRD tests to date have been clonal processes that are not tumor derived uh, like CHIP or clonal hematopoiesis of indeterminate potential. This is an age-related somatic process where mutations build up in a patient's bone marrow. And this process becomes almost ubiquitous as you start looking deeper into a patient's plasma, as well as when the patient's age increases. Frequently, these mutations are indistinguishable from common mutations that would be processed in patients with solid tumors. So really, the best way to uh, suppress these mutations is by knowing a priori what you're looking for. A tumor-informed method allows you to do this and really allows you to reliably suppress and eliminate most, if not all, uh, CHIP false positives. When we think about clinical validation of MRD assays like Signatera, it's important to be able to reliably identify micrometastatic disease. I always find it striking just at the similarity of these KNM plots that have been published in some of the top journals, including JAM Oncology, Clinical Cancer Research, Nature, as well as JCO. In patients with early stage disease that have been treated with curative intent, detection of ctDNA in this uh, surveillance setting is associated with close to 100, if not 100% risk of recurrence with adequate clinical follow-up in the absence of additional therapy. On the opposite end, Patients who are ctDNA negative and continue to remain ctDNA negative in this setting have a very low uh, risk of recurrence, really suggesting that what we're detecting with Sigmatera is micrometastatic disease, which most physicians agree is the source of metastatic recurrence in patients. For the first time, you do not have to estimate the risk of a patient having micrometastatic disease based on clinical or pathological risk factors. With Sigmatera, you can reliably measure the presence or absence of ctDNA, which is a proxy of micrometastatic disease. And the power of a test that can be done serially further allows you to reliably uh, rule in or rule out micrometastatic disease with serial testing. So what is some of the data for Sigmatera uh, in colorectal cancer? So we've recently published our results um, in a in our publication in JAM Oncology, and have expanded on these results in our ESCO 2020 presentation. In, in this abstract, we looked at now over 190 unique patients covering over 1,000 unique plasma samples, the majority of these patients having uh, stage two as well as three colorectal cancer. As we had previously shown in our JAM Oncology publication, patients who had CTD detected post-definitive therapy had a very high risk of recurrence. The positive predictive value of a single time point positivity was over 97%, meaning that a positive result in the absence of additional therapy is associated with close to 100% risk of recurrence in patients with early stage CRC. Furthermore, beyond this being just a prognostic marker, we've been able to show that CTA can also be predictive. So patients who receive additional therapy after being detected as being CTA positive can actually have the risk of recurrence modified. As we can see that patients who are MRD positive in this study after surgery had only a 70% risk of recurrence and they received management therapy. You know, obviously there's still a lot of work to be done to reduce this number even further, but really this is the first sign that shows that patients who are CTA positive can have their risk reduced 
with effective systemic therapy. On the other hand, patients who are CTDNA negative in the post-surgical uh, setting had a markedly risk or redu reduced risk of recurrence. So in this heavily stage three population, being CTDNA negative after surgery reduced your risk of recurrence just to down to 12%. Furthermore, being CTDNA negative on serial testing reduced that risk even further just down to 3%. In the study, we furthermore examined CTDNA status at various points of the patient's treatment. So for patients who were CTDNA positive in the post-surgical setting, the hazard ratio associated with recurrence was 14%. This of this patients were CTDNA negative. Furthermore, in the post-ACT setting, patients who were CTDNA positive uh, after finishing their systemic therapy or at any time point thereafter had a hazard ratio of recurrence of 27.9%. And then lastly, in patients who finish definitive therapy, this being either surgery or surgery plus minus adjuvant chemotherapy who were CTE positive had a hazard ratio of 47 uh, um, uh, X for recurrence. Additionally, CTA was able to be detected um, 8.15 months before clinical or radiological recurrence in the study. So it was an early marker of, uh, of recurrence in these patients. And in multivariate analysis, when every traditional clinical and pathological risk factor was included, the only risk factor that was important for detecting recurrence in these patients was CTDNA status after surgery. So this is really early evidence that the way we think even about staging of patients may be changing. So instead of TNM staging, we may have to think soon about TNMC staging, where we add CTDNA status uh, to traditional clinical and pathological risk factors when we think about a patient's chance of recurrence after definitive surgery. At ASCO this year, we presented the first large-scale clinical evidence uh, results looking at real-world MRD rates in patients uh, being tested with Signatera for early-stage colorectal cancer. In the study, we were able to show that CTDNA detection rates really paralleled real-world clinical recurrence rates uh, in patients stratified by various clinical and pathological risk factors. As you can see, for example, in patients post-surgery with stage 2 CRC, MRD detection rates were around 10% which is consistent with the recurrence rate expected in this population. Furthermore, when you further stratify in this population by T stage, you can see that only around 5.6% of patients were CTA positive with T3N0 disease. While patients with traditionally higher risk T4N0 disease had a markedly increased risk of MRD positivity of 28.6%. So again, the fact that MRD prevalence rates track very well with established clinical and pathological risk factors is another indication that what we're detecting here is the presence of micrometastatic disease. Furthermore, in the study, uh, having T4 versus T1 to T3 tumors was independently associated with CTA detection in the post-surgical setting. And then again, this makes a lot of sense since clinically uh, T4 status is one of the highest risk features associated with a recurrence in patients with early stage CRC. So while large prospective randomized studies are ongoing to further clarify how CTNA can be used to manage patients with early stage CRC, um, today, the way to best think about CTDNA status in the post-surgical setting is to really think about the prognostic implications of the test. So for patients who are CTNA positive post-surgery, these patients have a greater than 97% risk of recurrence. So really moving these patients into the high risk category when you're making adjuvant and surveillance decisions uh, is appropriate. While patients who are CTDNA negative have a greatly reduced risk of recurrence and in conjunction with traditional clinical and pathological risk factors, this may be very helpful when you're thinking about how, for example, a patient may be managed. So in the last few minutes, I wanted to review some uh, applications of Signatera in indications beyond colorectal cancer. So this is some of the work we previously presented uh, that was done with Princess Margaret Cancer Center, as well as Merck, looking at CTNA dynamics in patients receiving pembrolizumab. In the study, CTNA was collected uh, six weeks uh, after initiation of therapy and then six weeks thereafter. In this study, we were able to show that CTA dynamics as early as six weeks into the therapy 
were highly predictive of IO treatment response. With patients having CTA increase at this time point, having a close to 100% risk of progression by a few months into therapy. While patients with CTA decrease very early into their treatment course, being the patients who derive the most benefit from immune therapy. This is further amplified when we look at the concept of CTA clearance. Achieving deep MRD negativity as measured by Signatera was associated with 100% overall survival in the study, regardless of the underlying histology that was looked at. You can see as with up to 36 months of follow-up, not a single patient in the study who was CTDNA negative um, had an OS event. This was not a unique finding. Uh, this data has now been replicated um, by uh, Dr. Xu from the National Taiwan University, uh, looking at a data set uh, of patients being treated with atezolizumab as well as BEV. In this data set, um, Signatera uh, negative patients as measured at cycle four, day one, also had exceptional outcomes. Similarly to the prior data set, here, not a single patient with over 25 months of follow-up had an OS event if the patient was rendered to be CTD negative by this combination therapy uh, at cycle four, day one of therapy. So how are prospective studies utilizing circulating tumor DNAs measured by Signet Hera to really both decrease the size of the study, as well as to uh, read out the study faster. So some of the publicly announced studies uh, include the Columbia 2 study, sponsored by AstraZeneca. In this phase two platform study, Signatera is being used for MRD-based enrollment and randomization in the study, as well as being used as an early surrogate endpoint of treatment efficacy. In the Alicio Therapeutics uh, Phase 1-2 study, Signatera is being used uh, for patients uh, after definitive treatment for early stage pancreatic disease for both MRD-based enrollment as a surrogate of treatment efficacy. Uh, additionally, the plasma whole exome sequencing data is used for tissue genomic profiling and additional assays are being done in conjunction with the Signatera assay for exploratory purposes. The last study I wanted to highlight that was presented earlier at this meeting and publicly announced previously is the GALAXY study in the Circulate Japan Consortium. Um, this study is one of the larger prospective randomized studies looking for CTNA guided uh, treatment, both de-escalation as well as escalation uh, in the post-surgical uh, setting for patients with CRC. As you can see in the study, patients who are CTNA negative after surgery are randomized between just observation versus standard of care, KPOX, for three months, while patients who are CTA positive are being randomized between standard of care, KPOX, versus escalation to uh, investigational agent in the setting, namely CAS-102, to see if some of the activity uh, seen with this agent in the metastatic setting uh, can be brought into earlier stages of treatment. So with this, I wanted to thank everyone for your attention. Our contact information is listed here. And I really encourage you uh, to check out some of our um, abstracts that are being presented at this meeting by our collaborators, uh, namely Dr. Cohen, as well as Dr. Ukami. With this, I'd be free to take any questions. Thank you.